Hey guys, what's up? Jared Valder here, back with another episode of Wellness Wednesday on the Blindside Health Channel, your premium channel for all things me just explaining to you some health stuff that I think is cool. So yeah, I'm not gonna take myself too seriously here, but I got some cool stuff that I wanna share with you guys. Uh, one of my goals is to live a long, happy, healthy life. And so I wanna pass along some of that stuff. During the course of my football career, I had to figure out kind of some paradoxes on how to do something that was kind of bad for your health and be healthy doing it. Like going out there and smashing heads with somebody and then not having long-term you know, side effects, which there might be, but you know, there's ways to try to mitigate those with things that you can do for your health, like sleeping, eating correctly, um, those kind of things. Uh, and then there's the whole other side of trying to be over 300 pounds and having that be healthy. Try doing that, not easy. So I've played around with my diet a lot. I've really tried to center my philosophy around high quality ingredients and high quality sources. And I wanna talk to you about sandwiches. Maybe if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen some of these colossal creations that I've put out there that are you know, piled about this high with goodness. And it's kind of tough for me to put that out there without any kind of big disclaimer because sandwiches can be pretty junky for you. Um, you have to be very careful. You have to be selective with your ingredients. And I want to get into some of that right now. All right, guys, bread, that delicious outer shell of the sandwich. To me, it's, it makes or breaks a sandwich, honestly. Um, and I'm pretty picky on it because I wanna be picky because if I'm having junky bread, that's gonna make me feel like crap for the rest of the day. It's going to wreak havoc in my gut and it is just not gonna jive with what I'm trying to do. So I make sure that I have a high quality bread. I want to stay away from anything that has any potassium bromate in it. Um, that is a, a dough strengthener and leavening agent um, that uh, some commercial bakers and a lot of fast food uh, producers use when they are making some kind of sandwich, you know, be it a, a burger bun or, you know, something similar to that at, at Arby's or, or Blimpy or anything like that. I don't think Subway uses it. So Subway, good job for staying away from the potassium bromate because unlike some other countries, the U.S. allows it and it has been known to possibly cause cancer. There might be some carcinogenic effects in potassium bromate. And anything that may cause cancer, I don't want to keep that in my diet, even if it's a may. You know, there's just, there's no reason for that. It's a chemical that's not natural to the bread. Um, and it serves no purpose for it because you can have delicious bread that has no potassium bromate. So moving on to what I look for, I want to find something that's either sourdough or sprouted. Gluten is still a gut irritant, even if you don't have celiac disease. So don't think you're crazy for having your stomach feel kind of funny after eating a bunch of bread. Um, and one of the ways you can reduce that gluten content is by consuming a high quality sourdough bread. And I'm not talking about just like a, a sourdough bread where some sourdough starter is like the last ingredient on the grocery store shelf. I'm talking like a high quality bakery grade sourdough bread from your local baker. And I know bakery grade sounds kind of goofy because all bread's coming from a baker, but I'm talking about a uh, artisanal bread that is made from whatever bakery is down the street. Cause I guarantee they are gonna take much more pride in creating a more traditional sourdough bread than what you can find on your shelf. And you're supporting a local business, which is great. Um, I think we can all do that as much as we can support our neighbors because good things happen when we do that. I like using Field and Fire from downtown Grand Rapids. They use all organic ingredients, so I don't have to worry about pesticides or uh, any kind of GMOs being in the bread that I'm consuming. I know it's a nice high quality clean bread and it's super delicious, it's amazing. Like you stack this bread up to any other bread and good luck because it's that tasty. The other bread that I will use as kind of a, a substitute or a change up is some kind of sprouted bread. Uh, maybe you've seen Ezekiel bread in the store before. That's kind of the go-to if I don't have time to get to the baker or if I'm out of town and I just need something that's that's high quality, that is still organic, so it's free of those pesticides and GMOs. And the cool thing about uh, any of that Ezekiel bread, Genesis bread, uh, is that it's sprouted. And that gives the grains a little higher bioavailability for their nutritional content. And that's good for you. It's also going to get rid of some of those uh, gut irritants by soaking those grains, allowing them to, you know, not have those anti-nutrients. You know, it's pretty tasty. You put it in the toaster and it's a good base for your bread. It's no local bakery bread. It's no field and fire sourdough loaf, but hey, it's a good substitute if you don't have access to, you know, your local baker down the street to get that good bread. All right, so we got the bread down. Next thing on the docket is your meat. 
Um, yes, I'm gonna go meat before cheese because when I'm making my sandwich, I go bread, meat, cheese, add-ons. So let's get to the meat. You know, kind of my store-bought go-to um, if I just want something that tastes good and something that's kind of clean is boar's head. You know, boar's head does not go out of their way to ensure that the quality of their meat is gonna be great. Uh, you know, you're still getting mass farmed animals when you're eating their meats. You know, if you don't want the boar's head, if you want something a little bit cleaner than boar's head, um, look for Applegate Organics. Uh, they do a pretty decent job uh, with making sure they're putting out a clean product. Uh, the animal is gonna obviously have consumed organic feed if they're gonna label it as organic. And you're not gonna get some of those other chemical flavorings and chemical additives to the meat, uh, especially the nitrites. Uh, there'll be some naturally occurring nitrites in there, but it's not gonna be the same level as your uh, kind of bargain bin lunch meats that you can find at the store. A lot of other store-bought meats, uh, you run into some issues. Uh, one of those things being sodium nitrite for as a preservative, but if you eat a lot of that, uh, you know, you're packing that sandwich high with meat and you're having a lot of sodium nitrate, and that could really disrupt a lot of things uh, going on in your body. You don't want that. It's gonna jack up your mind. It's gonna create maybe a little bit of brain fog. And so just keep an eye on that. Another thing, high sodium content. Uh, it kind of acts as another preservative and it's going to really make it taste better. I mean, anything that's saltier is gonna be more palatable. So they're gonna load in the sodium. These store-bought deli meats, a lot of times they have problems with listeria. That's why pregnant women are supposed to stay away from them. And that's a bacteria that can grow even under refrigeration. Um, so to get around that, they're, yeah, like I said, jacking up the sodium content, uh, increasing sodium nitrites, and uh, adding some other chemicals as well. And some of these other chemicals are some flavoring agents. Perhaps you've heard about Coke having, you know, the, the caramel color or caramel color. And uh, you'll get that in lunch meat too. Um, just some weird things that they try to make something look more natural by adding unnatural things. And by more natural, it just means more naturally whatever your image of lunch meat looks like, not necessarily what the natural meat sliced should look like. I try to stay away from all that stuff. Again, I love supporting uh, local businesses. So I go over to Louis Searle Butcher in Grand Rapids and he works with all local farmers who do things the right way. Uh, they pasture raise their, their uh, animals and that shows up in great high quality meats. They do all their, their deli meats in house. Um, they're phenomenal. Uh, I don't have to worry about a bunch of sodium nitrate. I don't have to worry about high sodium content and the stuff is delicious. And I know that I'm supporting my local farmers, my local butcher when I'm making these phenomenal sandwiches. And you know what? I feel pretty good when I pack that meat high, when I pile it high up there, you know, I'm not getting a headache after I eat it. I'm not feeling like my fingers are swollen. It's good stuff, man. So I, I suggest finding a local butcher, like finding a local baker, you know, it, it can really add that extra oomph to your sandwich. And uh, I like a little oomph with my sandwich, you know, put a little base in it. All right, guys, on to cheese. So, so far we are going high quality bread, high quality meat. You know what? We're gonna keep the high quality train going with high quality cheese. It's just like the meat and the bread, it comes down to the quality of the source you're using and any kind of tactics around your health. You know, are you sensitive to dairy? You might want to find a lower lactose cheese. Uh, that being cheddar, swish, Parmesan, any hard cheese is going to have less lactose, therefore a little easier on your GI tract if you uh, have an issue with lactose. Me, I'm, I'm pretty good. I feel like I'm fortunate. All these sandwich ingredients don't really uh, mess my stomach up too much uh, unless I'm eating some really, really, really junky sources, um, which, you know, are kind of inevitable sometimes. Um, but, you know, I, I try to keep the good stuff around the house. And so one of those good things is cheese, you know, and I want to use good ingredients with the cheese. I try to look for any kind of uh, uh, cheese from pastured grass-fed animals. The whole reason I keep going back to finding sources that were pasture raised, these animals producing products that were grass fed themselves are because the nutritional quality is much better. You're gonna get higher omega-3 fatty acid content. And those omega-3 fatty acids are what keeps you uh, in a normal state of inflammation balance. If you start to have a lot of omega-6s in your diet, which Western diets are more heavy in in general, uh, that's gonna be pro-inflammatory. So you wanna get as many omega-3s as possible because those are the anti-inflammatory fatty acids. They also have more conjugated linoleic acid, CLA, and some higher vitamin contents like vitamin E, vitamin A, those kind of vitamins. And that's why I stick to pastured sources as often as I can because of that higher nutritional content. And 
you know what? If the cow cheese is hurting your stomach, try it. Just, just try a little bit of sheep cheese or goat cheese. And, and bear with me on this one because one of the biggest things, uh, one of the biggest irritants with dairy can be the A1 beta casein in it. Um, I don't know if you've seen it on the shelves, but now there's this whole new dairy company called A2. Um, they're putting out this A2 milk. It has no A1 beta casein, which are, uh, again, some of the uh, issues behind the uh, inflammatory effects of uh, lactose itself is this mutation that occurred a long time ago in the casein gene. And so A2 beta casein is supposed to be much easier on your track and it doesn't have that inflammatory property that uh, A1 beta casein has. So sheep cheese, goat cheese, they do not have the A1 mutations. So you don't have to really worry too much about, hey, is this going to be as inflammatory? Maybe it could be if you have a very you know high lactose issue or kind of dairy sensitivity. But a lot of times, again, that dairy sensitivity is because of that A1 issue. So you don't have to worry about that if you're having goat or sheep cheese. Yes, they're a little funkier, but honestly, I think a funky cheese is great on a sandwich. I mean, it, it's like the star of the show. If I'm throwing sheep cheese on a sandwich, that thing is awesome. Like it, it's phenomenal flavor. You can't get that flavor out of anything else you add on your sandwich. Um, and again, uh, a lot of these uh, producers of dairy who are coming from small farms like goat farms, sheep farms, um, you know, they're doing some good things and it's all about small scale farming, which I think is a lot more sustainable and uh, adds that, again, that local element because they depend on their communities to purchase their products. They're not going to be on the shelves and in the massive stores like Walmart. Um, you know, they're going to be at farmers markets, maybe some uh, local kind of artisanal stores. Uh, so check out there. Um, and it, it's good stuff. You might have to slice the cheese with a knife. I know it's not going to come prepackaged, but hey, it's not hard. It's easy. It's delicious. But if you're looking for something from the store, uh, you know, I'd recommend like a uh, grass fed cheddar. Um, that's kind of my go to. Trader Joe's has a, a great one. Um, it's going to get kind of away from the local thing because it's their new New Zealand grass fed uh, white cheddar cheese. And it's, it's pretty tasty. It goes well if I'm in a pinch. If I don't have my fancy cheeses, I'll throw that on there. And, uh, and that wraps out the kind of bulk of the sandwich. We got our high quality bread, our high quality cheese and high quality meat. All right, guys. So moving on to the add-ons, the accessories, the condiments. Um, do what you want to do, man. Be you. Experiment. Get kind of creative with this. Um, again, I try to look for organic sauces whenever I can because they're going to be free of any pesticides, GMOs. I'm not going to be getting all those chemicals into my sandwich, into my food, into my body. It's going to hold me back, man. I don't want chem chemicals. I don't think are going to help me live to 100 and be happy and healthy. Just going to throw that out there. That's just my thought. Maybe you're fine with it. I know a lot of them are deemed safe. But a lot of times our society kind of just deems things safe by, you know, having you skirt around on the bare minimum of your health, not necessarily what's the best for your health. So keep that in mind. Anyway, back to the sandwiches. So lately I've been drizzling some extra virgin olive oil on my toasted bread before I put the sandwich on. And maybe I'll drizzle a little bit at the very end over the, uh, the lettuce or kale that I'll put on there. I have a garden going out back, so I'll go and I'll clip whatever greens I got out there and I'll throw them on the sandwich. Some other things that can really boost your health that you can throw on the sandwich besides extra virgin olive oil uh, or any kind of greens like kale, spinach, are sauerkraut, kimchi, raw pickles, any kind of fermented veggie, uh, you'll get some good probiotics in there and some good prebiotics as well in that fiber from the fermented cabbage products. And they taste good, they add good flavor, but just be careful. I mean, don't go too crazy because sometimes if you're making like a turkey sandwich and you're throwing sauerkraut on there, it could be a little goofy, it's not gonna jive well. All right guys, that wraps up my little spiel on sandwiches. That's why I can make these ginormous sandwiches and fit them into my healthy lifestyle. I know there's still, you can nitpick all day if you want, say that there's things that aren't healthy in there, but I'm trying to use the highest quality sources I can as well as exercising and monitoring my total food intake and sandwiches fit. I'm able to do what I wanna do, make the goals I wanna make uh, and live a healthy lifestyle with my big old sandwiches as part of it. If anybody has any questions, please direct them in the comments. Let me know what kind of sandwiches you've been making. Let me know what kind of additions you've been adding to your sandwiches. Any kind of little superfood hacks that you can slide in there. Uh, be my guest, throw them in the comments, man. I wanna hear about it. And if you like this video, if you found it useful, if you're making some killer sandwiches, go ahead and just punch the crap out of that subscribe button. Just kidding, I don't want you to do that, but please subscribe because 
I'm going to throw out as much of this kind of information as I can. Stuff that is going to let you live a long, happy, healthy life, but not be restrictive. And at the same time, kind of giving uh, strategies that go alongside with superfoods and being able to modify your diet without restricting everything, keeping it social, keeping it fun, keeping it fulfilling. Uh, you know, no one wants to just be eating uh, a piece of lettuce all day, every day. That gets boring. Um, life's more than that. So guys, thanks for joining me today on this episode of the Super Sandwich Wellness Wednesday. It was fun. I hope you got a little something out of it. Go make yourself a big old sandwich.